say hi guys it's mrs. hand painted Jody hand and in today's video we're doing an easy abstract painting using your favorite color and this is a great relaxing painting to make when everybody is stressed out with this quarantine stuff so have fun painting with me <laughs> I wanted to try out a little bit of a different type of a painting tonight and do something a little more abstract and more practice doing some doodles. And I really liked pulling out one of these little um, art philosophy palettes again. And this time I have the Currents, which has got a collection of blues and greens. You can see the colors on there. Mine are all falling out of there. I've only used this one a handful of times, so they barely look like they're used. And then I have this um, trial pack of fluid watercolor paper. This is the hot press finish, and it's size 8 by 10. I haven't used this paper before, but um, because I'm going to be doodling on top of it with this micron pen, I wanted to use something that had oops, sorry, noise there wanted to use something that had a much smoother finish and this is a finish very similar like cardstock instead of um, the cold press paper here's a has I don't know if you can see it in the video but cold press paper has a little bit of a texture to it and then this hot press paper is very smooth so this would be good for doodling on top of so I'm gonna try this out and I'm gonna do something a little abstract and I'm actually gonna do this on 8 by 10 and then I'm gonna use it to make card fronts and I can make um, four four by five card fronts I'm just gonna paint the whole sheet and then I can cut it afterwards so I want to stick with just the blues in this set I'm not gonna use the green I'll probably use the blue maybe this is more like turquoisey but I'm gonna avoid these four greens I believe I'm gonna just do kind of the blue really just pick your favorite color and or you could do all reds purples or a mix of any colors you wanted rainbow just make it your own so I'm just going to do a simple pattern that's going to have different squares and rectangles. I really don't have a plan in place, but we'll just see where it goes. Okay. Let's start with that one. It's called Seaside. And I'm just making some random squares and rectangles on here. And then after it dries, I'm going to go back over with my micron pen and just kind of do some little doodle designs over the top. Alright, I am not usually using hot press paper or this paint in general, but it seems like it absorbs differently, so I'm getting kind of like streaky finish on this. Maybe I need to add more water to it or more paint. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go back over it again. All right, well, it's a different look, I guess. So, okay, I'm going to try a different color. I'll go to the next blue, which is called Blue Whale. Very pretty color. I'm gonna go over the top of that one. I think doing like circles or ovals or a different shape would actually look kind of cool too. I'll get some more of that actually. I'll make one here and I'm gonna, since that's still wet, I'm actually gonna go in and I'll overlap a little and see if it'll bleed into it. That'll be cool looking. It's a 
be a fun one to do with your kids too because they can really see the magic of watercolor the way that when you put wet paint into a wet something else that's wet it does that bleeding it's really fun okay this next blue is called ocean Mm, that really rattles in there. I'm not really sure if I like the hot press finish as much, but we'll see how it turns out after I do the, the doodling over the top. Maybe it will grow on me. I know that a lot of people, if you're combining your watercolors with stamps, the hot press paper is probably going to work best for you in that front because you get a nice crisp image with your stamp, whereas cold press paper, you're not, you can't press the stamp down hard enough into the the slight texture of the paper so you're not getting a very clean image when you do stamps. nice about something doing loose like this if you do kind of go outside of your line you can just add more to it it's very free form and relaxing okay so now I've got a green and this blue so that must that's another green I think I have these a little out of order in here that's, it. that's a green also okay I think these must have fallen out of here. I'm sorry, I think I have these in the wrong spots. This seems more like the jellyfish. I think I have these two flipped around here. I might try this on some cold press paper as well just to see how that looks. Well, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that I am using a round size 6, but really, the brush doesn't really matter. Use whatever brush you want, or you feel comfortable with. Okay, then I've got these four greens I'll skip, and then I've got this deep sea.
right, when you start getting to a certain point where you're getting very full, this is when I'm going to start adding in some smaller squares just to fill in some of the space. I'm going to have some where I feel like there's just too much white and I just want to fill in some small areas and then try to balance out the darks and the lights. So if I feel like I'm kind of dark up in this corner, I'll add in a few more of the lighter colored squares too, or rectangles. And just try to vary their size and shape again. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and dry that and then I can start doing my doodles. Go over this um, with the micron. This is the, the smallest one, the number one. This is angle one. Not one triple. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna use the stigma micron pen and do my doodle designs over this. Some of these I'm just going to outline, and then maybe I'll make a second outline. It doesn't have to be very fancy. Just go around. If you had a white gel pen, you could do white on some of the darker ones as well. I don't seem to have one that I can find real handy. Oh, I have a white chalk marker. Maybe I'll try that. metallic markers from my Cricut stuff. Maybe I'll try one of those too. The silver would look really good with that, but um, I'll just stick with the white and the black actually.
getting a little paint picking up on this marker. It's kind of old too, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to get up on the white ones for right now. Okay. Maybe I'll do some doodles that are kind of coming off of that.
Okay, I don't think I went too overboard there. So now at this point, I can just go ahead and cut it and put that on some cards, which I'm going to take a couple photographs of this first, and then I will come right back and I will cut it up and put it on some card fronts. All right, so now I'm going to cut this up and turn it into some cards. I had some blue cardstock that I cut in half down the middle, and then I folded that in half to make four cards out of two sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And this is an eight by 10 sheet of paper, so I should be able to get four, four by five sheets out of this. I've got a paper trimmer. runner here. I'm going to attach that to the front of my card. And then if I had some stamps or something, maybe um, I can get out later. I don't have to dig them all out. I could put a sentiment right here, or we could write, hello. Let's try that. We'll do that. Thank you. They're really fancy just making a cute little card here put it back here like it's a puzzle i guess that was originally like that all right, so I turned my painting into four cards. Um, maybe if I do this again, I would do it on a paper block and go out to the edges um, so that I don't have all that extra white space. And I don't think I'll be using that hot press paper again because I'm not a huge fan of the way that turned out, but it's a different style and I'm glad I tried it out. And if you wanna give it a go and wanna share your piece with me, I'd love to see it. You can use my hashtag Mrs. Hand Painted and tag me on Instagram. Thanks for painting with me.